Hello, my name is Maxim and today we will learn how to render big lists in React. And when I say big lists, I don't mean hundreds of items. I mean thousands and thousands of them. For example, let's say you want to list all the cities on Earth that will be more than 3 million items. Rendering them all at once on the web page won't work. Or at least will cause noticeable performance issues. Here is a little demo to prove it. I've bootstrapped an application using Create React App and used naive approach to render a list of elements. First I create an empty array with the 2 million items. I get the indices, and then I use them to fill a new array using spread operator. After that I simply map through the items to generate rows. Let's look at it in the browser. And as you can see, it's just too much for it. It cannot render the list and it prompts us to give up the process. So how do you solve it? Instead of honestly rendering all the list items, you create just enough to cover the window area and then reuse them. There is a great talk by Brian Vaughn where he explains this topic in greater detail. He also created a package called React Window that is meant to solve exactly this problem. It was designed to deal with huge lists in React. Now, let's try it out. Let's begin with a simple example from documentation. This example also uses React Virtualized Auto Sizer package to make the list take up all the ver vertical and horizontal space. Main part here is list component. It is responsible for rendering a windowed list of items. We specify height and width that we get from Autosizer. We give it an item count, in this case 1000, and we give it an item size. We will have vertical list, so item size is height of each item. It is also possible to have lists with items of a variable height. And then we pass a function to render row as a children. This function accepts index and style, and it's important to pass the style to your row components, because list needs it to be able to position them. We use index to apply odd or even styles. Let's look at that. And here you go, this is our list of a thousand items. Next example is a bit more complex. Now I also wrap my list in infinite loader. To use it you have to install additional package. It's called React Window Infinite Loader. It provides you with a function on item rendered and ref that you need to pass to your list. As you can see, I've hard-coded the amount of items. Actually, we could get this amount from the API we're gonna use, but it's not really needed for this example. So let's just say we want 1000 items. You also need to provide functions is item loaded and load more items to your infinite loader. Let's look at those functions. Is item loaded is very simple. It just takes the index of the item and validates that the item with such index exists in our items object. Load more items has more logic. It will be called every time you scroll the list. So I had to implement some caching to not call the API too often. Let's see what I did. This function gets visible start index and visible stop index, which are boundaries of visible items. And first thing we do, we create a string that will look like this. For example, we want to fetch items from 0 to 10. I will join those values to create a string to cache this request. So next time we scroll to this position, we don't perform uh, an actual fetch. Next, even though the actual fetch with these IDs might have not been performed, we still might already have the items in this range. So we need to validate this as well. I calculate the distance between start and stop indices, and then I create a visible range, range of indices that we are gonna fetch. Here I use the technique from the first example to generate an array. Then I map through them to increase the values by start index. And then I perform the assertion. I check that every item in visible range does not actually have an item in our items object, which means that the item with this index was not yet fetched. If all the items in this range are retrieved, I store the key in the cache and return from the function. Otherwise, if there is even one item in this range, we perform an actual fetch. Get URL function just creates a URL with specific query params. I use length and visible start index to form them. After I get response, I get JSON from it, iterate through records, it will be cities, and then I save cities in items object. And that's it, let's see how it works. Here is the final result. Thank you for watching this video and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments.